Today's our last day. How do you feel about it? Well, my trick has improved, but my body is wrecked. I'm not used to all this fresh air. Okay, everyone, today's the last day here. Today we're going to tackle some trick problems, which means you'll need to choose which rule to use in order to solve these problems. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to choose the best trigonometrical rule to solve a problem and solve problems that involve more than one triangle. Before I give you your challenges for today, I want to check how much you can remember of what we've done. We started by using the trick that you already knew, Sokatoa. Who can tell me what this stands for? Sokatoa is a way to remember that sine of an angle is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, cos is adjacent divided by hypotenuse, and tan is the opposite side divided by adjacent. Very good. But this didn't get us far now, did it? Can anyone remember why? The triangles we worked with weren't right angled. Sokatoa only works for right angled triangles. But we learned three new formulas which work for any triangle. And what are they? The area rule, the sine rule, and the cosine rule. I'm impressed. Now, can you write down each of these rules? Here's triangle ABC, already with the size labeled A, B, and C. There's the area rule, um, but I think I need some help with that, please. Me too. I can't seem to remember that. That's fine. The area rule says that the area of triangle ABC is equal to half B times C times the sine of angle A. Right, now I remember. And I can change that rule to use A and C here, and sine B here, or A and B here, and sine C here. Okay, now you know the rule, but you need to remember it. So put it into your memory store of useful math tools. Next, can you remember the sine rule? Well, this one's easy to remember. It uses the ratio of the side and the sine of the opposite angle. So in triangle ABC, Sine A divided by side A equals sine B divided by side B. And it equals sine C divided by side C. And we can use the inverses of the ratios as well. So side A divided by sine A equals side B divided by sine B. And that equals side C divided by sine C. Now the third rule we learned about is the cosine rule. Now this rule is not as easy to remember, but you'll see that there is a pattern to it. The cosine rule says that in triangle ABC, a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2 times b times c times cos of angle a. So when you use a squared on the left side, you will use cos of a here. Okay? Then b and c for the other parts of the rule. Now can you tell me what the formula would look like if you're looking for b squared? I'll have a go at this. On the left of the equation, you put in b squared. That means you can put cos of b at the end of the equation. Then you use a and c for the other parts. That gives you b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2 times a times c times cos of angle b. Right, now I'll leave you with all these rules to refer to. Your first challenge involves two connected triangles. You have the diagram right in front of you. I have marked the vertices A, B, C, and D. I want you to find the size of angle D. Okay. We've been given AC, AB, and CD. We also have two angles, A and this one at B. AC is 9,34 meters, and AB is 13,56 meters. And angle A is 105 degrees and angle B is 67 degrees, and CD is 17,45 meters. So where do we start? We have to find angle D, but there isn't enough information in the triangle that D is in. I guess we'll have to look in the other triangle first. I suppose so. It seems like you two aren't too sure whether you are on the right track. Have a look. The angles in triangle ABC have no effect on the angles of triangle BCD. However, both triangles share a common side, BC. If we can work out BC in triangle ABC, that will give us an extra piece of information for triangle BCD. This is the key to solving the challenge. Great, but I need to label the sides first. Side A, side B, and side C. 
I find it helps to label the sides. The rule all use A, B and C. So it will make sense to actually label all the sides like that. Let's find A. Then we can worry about finding angle D. Yeah, but which rule are we going to use? This is not a right-angled triangle. And we're not interested in the area of the triangle. So that leaves us with the sine rule and the cosine rule. In triangle ABC, we know side C, side B, and angle A. If we use the sine rule, we need enough information to form a cross on this diagram like this. But we don't have enough information. The angle that we know is the included angle between the two sides that we know. So maybe we should use the cosine rule. That sounds good. Now check your idea by looking at the cosine rule. You know side B, side C, and angle A. So this rule will calculate side A for you. Is that what you're looking for? That's exactly what we wanted. We found A, and we can use it in triangle B, C, D as well. Okay, let's go for it. We substitute 9,34 for B into the cosine rule, and 13,56 for C. Angle A is 105 degrees. So, on the calculator, that's 9,34 squared plus 13,56 squared minus 2 times 9,34 times 13,56 times 105 cos equals... So that's 336. 6682712. Is that right? Remember, we made the exact same mistake the last time. We have the answer as a squared, so we still need to find the square root of that number. Right. The square root of a equals 18,34. Oops, 18,35 rounded off to two decimal places. And that's about right. Looking at our diagram, it's longer than side C and side B, which makes sense. Now, when we look at triangle BCD, we know three pieces of information. So this time, we should be able to get angle D. But I think the labels of the sides have to change. Look, this side is opposite angle D, so it is side D. And CD is opposite angle B. So we'll have to label it B and side BD is opposite angle C. So it's side C. Now you're faced with another choice. Will you use the sine rule or the cosine rule? Let me think. Let's put a question mark at D. That's what we're looking for. The side opposite it is D. And we have just worked out that it's 18,35. Here we have angle B and we know side B. So we have a cross with the information. That means we can use the sine rule. Great. And we can write the rule like this. The sine of angle D divided by D is equal to the sine of angle B divided by B. Now we can put these values in. 18,35, 67, 17,45. So that leaves D to find. If we multiply by 18,35 on both sides, we get sine of D equals 18,35 times sine of 67 divided by 17,45. On the calculator, I get 67 sine times 18,35 divided by 17,45 equals... How am I doing so far? You found sine of D. Now you need to use the inverse sine keys. Okay. So D is equal to 75,46 degrees. We did it! We found angle D. Imagine having to solve all these problems without the sign and cost rule. I'm glad you realized that. These rules will come in handy with all sorts of problems. Now I feel like I can take on anything that has to do with trig. Good. Now you're ready for your last challenge. Find the area of triangle ABC using that diagram. Another problem with more than one triangle. 
This one has three. Let's see. We want the area of ABC. That's the triangle in the middle here. The one with the least information given. All we know is that this angle at B is 55 degrees. We also know at least two of the triangles are right angled. Let me give you a hint. Finding a common side of two triangles is usually the key. This allows you to drag information from one triangle to another. Look at triangle ABC. What information would you want to borrow from triangle APB? And what information would be useful from triangle CBQ? Let's see. The angles aren't much use to us, but the triangle shares common sides. I think we can use AB from triangle APB and BC from triangle CBQ. That looks good. Then we will have two sides of triangle ABC and the angle at B will be the included angle between those two sides. That means we can use the cosine rule or the area rule. It's the area we want, so I think that we should go for the area rule. Okay, we've got our plan, but we haven't checked that we can actually find AB and BC. Let's start with BC. Okay, so we want to look at CBQ first. Let's draw it so we can focus on the triangle alone. This triangle is right angled, and we know two sides, QC and BQ. Maybe we can use some tricks to find BC. I don't think so. We need an angle. Just when I thought I knew everything about trick. Hang on a minute. This is a right angled triangle, right? That makes QC a hypotenuse. So we can use Pythagoras' theorem. Well done. Even though you've learned three new rules, you must always watch out for a place where you can use the old rules. QC squared equals BC squared plus BQ squared. I'll put BC squared by itself. So BC squared is equal to QC squared minus BQ squared. I've got it. BC squared equals 14,5 squared minus 5 squared. That's 185,25. To get just BC, we square root this and I get BC is equal to 13,61. Correct to two decimal places. Right. So we've got BC. Now let's find AB. Triangle APB is also a right angle triangle. We have AP and angle A, and we want to find AB. If I put my finger on angle A, AP is adjacent and AB is the hypotenuse. So I can use cosine. Cos of 44 degrees equals 11 divided by AB. If I multiply by AB on both sides, I get AB cos 44 equals 11. But hang on, I just want to get AB. Good, you're doing fine. You're only one step away. Divide through by cos of 44, then you'll get AB equal to 11 divided by cos 44. This will be easy to solve with a calculator. Okay, 11 divided by 44 cos equals, I get 15,29 to two decimal places. After all that, I've forgotten what we're supposed to work out. Well, we're supposed to find the area of triangle ABC. Now that we already know the lengths of A, B, and B and C, it shouldn't be that difficult. Okay, let's draw triangle A, B, C on its own, with the new information on it. We found B, C is 13,61, and A, B is 15,29. And let's label the sides with A here, B here, and C here. Now I'm pretty sure that the area rule is what we need. Let's look at the rule again. We have angle B, so we'll use sine B. That means we need the formula in this form. Half AC times sine of B. The area of triangle ABC equals half times 15,29 times 13,61 times sine of 55 degrees. That's 85,24. Great, so the area is 85,24 squared meters. Well done, you two. Did you notice how Gerard and Rafila split the problem into smaller parts? Good. Now let's look at what we've learned. In this lesson, we have seen that part of the skill needed to use trig rules is deciding which rule to use. We make this choice based on the information we know and the information we must find. We solved two challenges that involved more than one triangle. 
They use the common sides of the triangles to move information from one triangle to another. This is the key to success in solving these kinds of challenges. During the camp, we've explained each new trick rule and applied a knowledge of trick to solve problems. But there are two more important things that you need to do. First, know your trick rules. Second, practice a range of different types of problems, which you can get from your textbook or you can ask your teacher for more. And for all you learners out there watching, here's your task today. Your task is to determine the length of DC. Well guys, you've made it through your maths camp. Congratulations. Okay, it's been tough going at times, but you are now equipped with the knowledge to apply on any trick problems you come across, provided that you keep practicing and learning. Okay, have a safe trip back. Woo! <laughs> Hey, <laughs>